Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. That's a total disrespect of our heritage. That's a total disrespect of everything that we stand for, okay? You're changing history, you're changing culture. This has nothing to do with race. I've never said anything about race. This has nothing to do with race or anything else. This has to do with respect for our country and respect for our flag. To many, Donald Trump's attacks on athletes who protest during the national anthem echoed the tone and tenor of his message on Charlottesville. The outcry against the president's latest round of divisive comments has swelled across the nation, boiling over from football to baseball and basketball to cultural icons like Stevie Wonder, who took a knee during Saturday's Global Citizens Festival. Everywhere you look this weekend, the show of solidarity loomed large over the president's polarizing message. Joining our panel today, New York Times op-ed columnist and MSNBC contributor Brett Stevens, former Republican congressman of Florida David Jolly, Stephanie Cutter, the deputy campaign manager for Obama 2012, and with us from Washington, Jason Johnson, politics editor for The Root and an MSNBC contributor. Um, Brett, let me start with you. you um, your piece is the text of a speech you gave about the dying art of disagreeing. And I read it after sort of taking in this whole weekend of news. And I wonder what you make. I mean, my sense is that um, you can love the national anthem and stand up for it, but stand up so that the person next to you can kneel and protest if they want to. Why does he create all these binary choices where they don't exist? Well, I mean, the great question is whether this is um, a political calculation with malice of forethought. The idea that what do you this, think? Well, in his case, I suspect that it is. But with, with Trump, the line between sort of malice and idiocy is always this sort of blurry one. It's always difficult to, uh, uh, to tell. I mean, I think Trump I just, thought... I just have to quote you right <laughs> The line between malice and idiocy is a blurred one. Did I say that? Yeah, yeah I think you just said that. Uh, We're going to make a banner. That might be my favorite thing anyone Well, look, said. I mean, there's, there's a kind Never. of a, a cunning, a political cunning right. at work in the idea like that uh, Colin Kaepernick is an unsympathetic character, especially to Trump's voters and going after him in the midst of his own political difficulties is sure to be a winner, not least because in doing so he's trolling the left, right? So that's, that's on, the, on, on the one hand. But the, the real issue here is, is the principle at stake, which, which you're raising. I mean, you don't love the flag, you don't love the anthem because they're totems. I mean, we're not <laughs> existing in some sort of prehistoric culture where you worship I don't know, a, 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 a stone. You love them because they represent a series of constitutional liberties, protections, a system of Republican and small L liberal government in the broadest sense of the word, which is what makes America special, that you can, in fact, engage in political protests and in, in, in public events like this. This is not a deviation from what it means to be an American. It's the essence of what it means to be an American. You know, Colin Kaepernick, these guys disagree. And disagreeing is something that we are spend much too much time trying to suppress, whether it's cam campus activists on the left or, or um, Trumpian uh, uh, characters on, on the right, saying that any kind of leftist dissent is somehow unpatriotic. Uh, let me ask you one more thing. I, I talked to someone over the weekend who said that you don't lurch toward authoritarianism. You slide there, one freedom at a time. Do you think he's trying to shame people um, who trying to turn those freedoms into anti-American gestures? Uh, it's a be whoever said that it should also be, I think, uh, uh, quoted. You know, there's there's essentially a kind of a boiling a the, there's source. a boiling the frog to <laughs> use the cliche. You know that we don't notice how the temperature is rising, or maybe we're defining deviancy down in a way that that goes un unmentioned. Let's not forget that in the famous 1989. Uh, uh, flag burning case that came before the Supreme Court. I think it's Texas v. Johnson. It was Antonin Scalia, that well-known left-wing uh, <laughs> uh, activist jurist, who said that you have a right to burn the flag. It's a fundamental liberty. And if you have the right to burn the flag, you certainly have the right to take a knee at uh, an F NFL game, irrespective of how I may feel about the appropriateness of that gesture sure. at that point in time. 
Steph, what do you make of the fact that Donald Trump successfully mainlines division to his base in a way that is proven effective at holding that 33 to 38 percent base with him through all these um, seemingly career-ending disasters. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know if they're career-ending. <laughs> Too soon to tell. <laughs> and I also want to say, well said. Thank you. Uh, look, he knows exactly what he's doing. He has a... a so you a, go with cunning, uh, not idiocy. Well, I don't think... Um, I think he knew he was going to say that Friday night. Uh -huh. And I knew... I think he knew the debate that he was about to have. But he's, he's made a political career out of driving a wedge through white grievances. And that's exactly what he did. And there's a whole group in, of people in this country who are shaking their heads in agreement. They might not agree with his tactics or that the fact that he called them sons of bitches. Um, but they, agree, they are in agreement with him that you shouldn't kneel um, during the national anthem. And it's disrespect to the flag. I disagree. I agree with both of you that uh, the whole reason the flag exists is because we can share our opinion. We can disagree. We do have the right to, uh, to freedom of expression. Um, but not everybody sees it that way. I think, you know, look, he, he was just starting to tick up in the polls mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the way he handled the hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Let's put aside Puerto Rico for a second. Mm -hmm. um, and because he had struck some deals with um, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, it'll be interesting to see whether that 2 to 3 percent that he gained sticks with him after, as a, after this. Jason, let me ask you um, your thoughts about not just the base and firing up his base, it doesn't seem like that's his political need at the moment. As Stephanie was just saying, he, he, he finally had started to regain some of the ground with the original group of people who had voted for him by doing deals with the Democrats. This seems like the kind of thing that will repel them. Well, yeah, but um, here's the thing, Nicole. I don't think this is an issue of cunning. This isn't brilliance. This is just id. And that's who the president is. It's just, it's just living it. He's a bigot, he's hostile, he's arrogant, and he likes telling people what he thinks. And what happened, which often occurs is since he's become president and he's no longer just sort of tabloid father, is he forgets that people don't have to agree with you anymore and they don't have to kiss your butt when they don't want to get on your TV show and when you're president of the United States. Part of what he elicited this weekend, to be honest with you, is he angered a bunch of other rich guys by attacking the career or the hobby that they have by owning NFL teams. And I think at the end of the day, uh, in another week when, when our news cycle changes again, he's going to lose that extra 2 or 3% because you know what he did? For whatever complaints people may or may not have about protests and police brutality, which is sometimes missed in this discussion, he ruined Sunday football. There were a bunch of great games, <laughs> and instead we were talking about this. And that's the kind of thing that makes him less popular as president. Um, so, David, my parents are uh, some of the more famous Trump supporters in the country. They called and said they didn't watch, and I said, well, I bought an NFL pass. So so maybe right. the NFL law. No, but, but seriously, Ben Sass also tweeted to NFL players, you have the right to protest Trump tomorrow, but aren't there better ways than kneeling before the, uh, the, the, kneeling before the flag that soldiers died to defend? Um, can you offer some words of wisdom to yeah. Republicans who are largely struggling to find their voice in, in I, I, I mean, I, I come down on the side of, um, I think loving the flag means loving your sure. friend or your neighbor or your kids right to kneel um, before it. But, sure. but for Republicans that are struggling with the overlap with the Trump base, what should they do? Yeah, so my wife and I enjoyed game day at Miller's Ale House in Seminole in a very special way yesterday, <laughs> Good. right? Um, but there's two lanes. There's the Kaepernick First Amendment issue, right. and there is the race issue. And as you and I engaged in a bit of a Twitter conversation yesterday, Look, a lot of conservatives come down on the side of law enforcement in some of these hard conversations. Not that it's a binary choice, but I think a lot of conservatives listen to the law enforcement position as much as they do, say, the Black Lives Matter, the social justice Kaepernick platform. What Trump did, though, is he turned this into a First Amendment issue, where conservatives now say, you know what, Kaepernick has a right to take a knee. And professional athletes have a right to express their freedom of political speech. But we can't overlook the racial overtones of this. We simply can't. Listen, I, I am the child of a white Southern Baptist preacher from the South, and I grew up in the South, but I'm also the son of a pastor who was criticized for baptizing a black female teenager in the 60s. And there is no question what the president has done. It may not be a racial issue to the president, as he said on Twitter today, 
But is it that isn't. a lie or is it ignorance? It's a lie. I don't know. It may be a lie. But listen, here's the important thing. It is an issue of race to millions of Americans, right. including the athletes we saw take a knee. And you are president of the entire United States, not just the Republican Party. And if it is an issue of race to some, it is an issue of race to all. And the president has ignored that and he's failed on that test. All right. We have to hit pause, but we have much more to come. No one's going anywhere. What does it feel like to jump up and down and scream at the top of your lungs? Don't drive over the cliff and then watch your political party floor it and drive over the